Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and today's tutorial is on a process called sublimation. Sublimation has been around for several years, but I've always been afraid to get started because I assumed it cost so much money and since I am a hobby crafter, I wasn't sure it was worth the investment. But let me tell you, I'm going to show you a way to get started with a $200 printer and $20 sublimation ink and then you can use your easy press or heat press to actually sublimate. So if you're not familiar with sublimation, sublimation is the process of printing from a sublimation printer with special ink that dyes polyester fibers. So this is a polyester onesie. It's 95% polyester and 5% spandex, and it dyes the fabric so that it really is one with the fabric. So you can see as I stretch it, it is all dyed and you don't lose that image. So this is an infusible ink onesie from Cricut, now that Cricut has made sublimation pretty mainstream, you actually can get these blanks at a lot of places. So this onesie, when it was on sale, it was around $2, so not a bad price point at all. You can also sublimate on any other infusible ink blank, like these Cricut coasters, and I printed this pattern from Yeti Paper Co. and then sublimated it on top of my coaster, and you can see that the image actually wraps around the edges. So it's really, really cool. So I am going to show you how it works, I mentioned that it works with polyester fibers, and then this is coated with a polymer glaze. So if you are interested in getting started, what you'll look for is anything that has a sublimation compatible or sublimation blank in the name should work. As this gets more popular, I assume that more blanks will be available. So you can also look for anything that says compatible with infusible ink, since Cricut's infusible ink is very similar to sublimation since it's sublimation ink on a liner that works with your Cricut. So any of the infusible ink blanks will work. And retailers are also starting to release tote bags and other materials that are made out of polyester so that it can work with infusible ink and sublimation. To get started, we are going to convert a regular eco tank printer, an inkjet printer, into a sublimation printer. So I'm gonna show you the printer I have and then we're going to fill it up with some sublimation ink. Here's the printer that I converted to a sublimation printer. This is an Epson ET4700, and instead of having cartridges, it has these tanks that you fill up with ink. So instead of filling it up with regular printer ink, I actually filled it up with sublimation ink. This will only work if your tanks are completely empty, so I had never put any other ink other than sublimation ink in this printer. This is the ink that the printer comes with, and this is just regular printer ink, so you're not going to use the ink that it comes with, but you're actually going to want to order sublimation ink, and you'll see here that it says EP sublimation ink. I purchased this ink on Amazon, so I'll put a link in the description, as well as a link to several options for your Epson printer. I got my ET4700 from Target when it was on sale for $200, so not a huge investment. So you're going to fill up the eco tank with this special sublimation ink. And what I did at first is I just uncapped my ink and then I let it drip in. And that took a really long time. So I decided to work a little bit smarter and I realized that the lids on these caps help with filling up. So I took off the lid from one of the bottles and I used a wrench to get it off. And then I rinsed it out so that none of the ink from the original bottle was on it and I place that right over the eco tank. Then when you fill it up, you can take off the lid and kind of just drop it into the lid like this. And it works as a funnel and it's a lot easier because you can get ink in there a lot quicker. So that's what I did and I would definitely recommend that. I looked online to see if I could buy empty bottles like this to make the refill process a little bit easier. And what I found is you can actually buy sublimation ink in these special bottles. They were a little bit more expensive, so for me, since I'm pretty frugal, taking off the caps and using them as funnels worked great. Also dripping it in and just being really patient when you fill it up works as well. On the front of your printer, you will be able to see how full your ink is. So after you're done filling it up, you'll pop this off and make sure that all the ink is drained out as much as possible so you don't waste any ink. And then you'll just use a paper towel to dry off your cap and you'll rinse this out so that it doesn't leak ink everywhere. Once you're done filling up the ink, power on your printer and Epson will run an initialization process for about 10 minutes, so just go ahead and wait for that process to complete. After your printer is done initializing, it'll walk you through a series of different tests. 
So the first one, it'll make sure that there's no gaps in your lines and you'll just kind of repeat the process until you get straight lines. Next, it'll walk you through two different tests and it'll have you choose the boxes that print the best so that your printer is aligned and ready to go. The image I'm using today is from Yayday Paper Co. and I will link directly to the image I'm using. And then I also wanted to show you that the Suns Out stationery bundle is where I got that cute rainbow and fruit print. So if you want those images, I'll link to those as well. Once you download your image, I would recommend dragging it onto your desktop. So mine's right here down in the bottom left. I'm gonna show you this in Silhouette Studio because you can download Silhouette Studio for free. So even if you don't have a Silhouette cutting machine, you can download this program onto your computer and follow along with me. So we're gonna drag the image into Silhouette Studio. And then you'll wanna make sure that your page is set up as a letter size page since that's what we're printing on. So I have my size, I just clicked on this tab here, this little piece of paper, and then you'll adjust the media size to eight and a half by 11 and make sure that it's portrait or whatever orientation you'd like. So now you can resize your image however big or small you'd like to place it. And you can also edit the image so that we can flip it horizontally. So we wanna flip it horizontally since we're going to press it onto our shirt. After you have everything resized, you can print it out. And you can do more than one image on the page, so you're not limited to just one. Up at the top, we're going to click File, and then click on Print. And I like to show the details, so if that's not open, just go ahead and click Show Details, and choose the printer that you just set up. Under Media and Quality, I'm going to select this to Best, and then that's the only thing that I feel like I should change. And then I will click Print. When your image comes out, don't worry, it's going to look a lot lighter than what it's going to transfer like. So you can see that it is a really good print quality. Well, it's kind of hard to see right now since we haven't transferred it, but there's no lines or gaps in our image. It looks really good. And now we're gonna transfer it onto our project. I'm going to transfer my design on this t-shirt, so I'll show you how to prep it. But before I do that, I wanted to talk about the paper that I printed this on. So this is regular copy paper. It's not even laser copy paper, it's just regular multi-purpose copy paper. I, like I mentioned, I am a very cheap crafter, and so I wanted to see if it would work on regular copy paper, and it does, but sublimation companies will recommend their paper, so I will have to do a comparison to see if there really makes a difference. But this is just regular multi-purpose copy paper. To prep my shirt, I'm going to take a lint roller, and just lint roll across the entire t-shirt to make sure there's no loose fibers or threads. Inside, I'm going to place a piece of butcher paper. If you don't have butcher paper, you can use drawing paper or even copy paper. I'm using an easy press for my project, so I'm going to heat this up to 400 degrees and we will be pressing it for 60 seconds. You can also use a heat press for this part. This one was used, I used a heat press, and I will link to the heat press that I have in the video's description. But I used a heat press and pressed it at 400 degrees for 60 seconds as well. And it worked great. This is actually after it's been washed several times, so the ink hasn't faded at all. Once your easy press is hot, we're going to place another sheet of butcher paper right on the top. And then I'm just gonna press this for about 15 seconds. For my design, we're gonna place it face down on our t-shirt, and you can kind of see through the copy paper so that you can have it nice and straight. And then for kids' shirts, I like to go about two fingers down from the neckline, and then you'll just wanna make sure that it's equal on both sides of the image. Another optional step is using heat-resistant tape to tape down your image. I am working on a easy press mat, which I definitely recommend. And then we're going to cover our image with butcher paper once again. Using your easy press, you'll wanna make sure to avoid the neckline right up at the top. And then you'll place your easy press over the image and press for 60 seconds. For this part, I do use a little bit of pressure. It's not much, I just have my hands on the easy press. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, I usually put two pieces of butcher paper on top of that. It didn't bleed through onto my easy press, but you'll wanna make sure to just be cautious um, when you're pressing anything with a lot of ink. So I do recommend two pieces of butcher paper on the top. I had this and I just forgot to throw it on there. So after you're done, you'll peel this off and you'll wanna to toss this because you don't want the ink to transfer to anything. And then you'll just peel off your design. 
And there we go. So here is our custom Craftivist shirt. There's no cutting machine required, no layering, and everything is so cute. So you'll have to let me know if you try out this process. Again, all of the links to the products, to this image, everything is in my video description. So you'll have to check it out. Thanks so much for joining me in this video and I will see you in the next one.